Hey, what's up? Just standing here super casually. Definitely not hiding anything behind this door. <laughs> Remember when we moved to this house and I was so excited about how much storage space there was? I remember it because it wasn't that long ago. Six months ago, to be exact. I didn't really expect to uh, expand my fabric stash as much as I have within those six months, but you give me space and I fill it. So now, um, it's full. It's more than full. It's overflowing and a mess. Whoops. My planned organization of this closet went out the window probably like a month in, and we've reached the point that there's stuff buried back there that I can't see and I've forgotten I have. And I'm not cool with that. So before it drives me totally insane, I thought I'd do a little cleaning and reorganization. And while I'm at it, I wanted to specifically set aside fabric that I already have plans for. A lot of the stuff in here, I maybe didn't buy for a reason, but when I bought it, I quickly came up with a reason. So I want those to not only be separate so that they're ready to go whenever I get to those projects, <laughs> Lord willing and the creek don't rise, and so that I don't mix them up and accidentally use them for something else. And also because I like organization and labels and separation and groups and yay. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of sketch out ideas for any piece of fabric that I have an idea for and yeah. Step one is going to be taking everything out of this closet. Ooh, I should probably vacuum the floor first. But before we start that, let me take you on a quick little tour of all the places I'm currently stashing fabric because I'm out of room in the closet. So first up, we of course have the closet itself. At one point, all of these shelves were organized into different categories. Um, that is no longer the case. It's kind of just a mess now. We also have this pile of fabric, which I took out of the closet and did not feel like putting back into the closet. You'll notice that behind that, there's another little stash of fabric right there. That is actually some fabric that I got at a Remainders sidewalk sale. So I wasn't really looking at what it was. And when I got it home and started going through everything I'd pulled, these were all items that mm, I don't really want. So I set those aside, but those really need to like be donated back for somebody else maybe who would prefer them or possibly thrown away. I don't really know. So they're just stuck right there for now. Then we have this pile. This is my last, most recent Remainders haul. It did not fit in the closet. Taking a little trip over here, we have more fabric. Huzzah! This is for a project. It's already set aside. That is my second capsule wardrobe, which yes, I still have not made. This is from another recent Remainders haul. Um, it's all beautiful fabric that looks so good together and I'm tempted to turn it into another capsule wardrobe, but also I think I need to stop doing that. So I left it here uh, for four reasons, but it needs to not be there. And in this corner, we have all of my recently acquired spools of fabric. <laughs> they would be fine in this corner. I'm kind of okay with them here, but I do think I have a better spot for them in the same room with all the other fabrics. So I might, move all of that right now as well. Oh, and I also always forget about it because it's buried behind loads of junk, but there's also two things of fabric here. Yes, that one's empty. So two random pieces of fabric that I happen to buy on the bolt sitting over here. So that's all of it for now. It's not too bad. It's just um pretty clearly more than is going to fit in this cabinet. Luckily, I do have other storage spaces around this house. I just have a thing with like everything of one kind needs to be in one place, but that's clearly just not how it's going to be right now. I guess let's get started. You know, I'm both like lightly ashamed 
of how quickly I filled up this cabinet and also super proud of myself for it because 99% of the fabric in here, okay maybe like 95, is either stuff that I got thrifted for extremely cheap or stuff that I was given for free by my sister, my mother-in-law. So there's very little fabric in here that I actually like paid for. But at the same time, I did buy a ridiculous amount of fabric in the last six months. So that's where you bring in like the light amount of shame. Oh well, let's time lapse this baby. So, um, admittedly, the shame levels have risen a little. <laughs> Ooh. Well, now I'm lightly overwhelmed. Uh-oh. In order to focus my brain. I think the best option now is to remove things that could be stored elsewhere. From there, I'm gonna start organizing into piles. Stuff that I already have an idea for, and then everything else needs to get separated out into my form of fabric organization. Stretchy fabrics, non-stretch fabrics, small pieces of fabric, specialty fabric. I made the mistake of sitting down and now I'm really struggling to get myself to move my own butt. Let's go. You know, I do not appreciate it when other people treat me like a child, but I have to treat myself like a child all the freaking time. Like, you know, if you pick up after yourself, you can have a cookie. Highly food motivated. So in the living room, I've got a couple storage options. Hello, preciousness. So this is an incredible trunk that currently has absolutely nothing in it. It's got drawers on the bottom here and then the whole top opens. I could store anything in there. It's empty right now. I only use it to store stuff on top of. He approves. And then over here, we also have this whole lovely thing. The name of, I forget right now. Literally the only thing in my head right now is tonkatsu. And that is not at all what this is called. <laughs> Y'all, Facebook Marketplace for both of these things. These were good finds. Uh, this I believe is currently not empty. Oh yeah. <laughs> I threw some random stuff in here. So I currently have a bunch of handmade pattern pieces in there and you know, a laptop, cause why not? Nothing in the rest though. Look at the secret compartment. There's nothing in there. So because this is easier to get to, I think I'm actually just gonna move all of those pattern pieces into the trunk and this is going to become my secondary fabric storage. So felt, tool, maybe other stuff, but for now felt and tool can go in here. I feel like it's pretty obvious to me that I'm never gonna use these patterns again, but like I spent so much time creating them that I feel bad just throwing them away. So into the drawer they go. Let's bring in some fabric. So neat and tidy. Tool. Well, this is a good start. I can get a lot more in here if necessary. Back to the pile. Okay, so my plan here is to just pull this forward and that leaves me with a gap right here that hopefully I can get all of those tubes of fabric into. All right, yeah, that all fits. Boom. I think that works well. It's in the same room with the rest of my fabric. It's out of the way. This was a good idea. And now we're gonna pause to design a little bit because a couple of these fabrics I have ideas for. So first up, we have this amazing sky blue velvet. It's 
so soft, it's so gorgeous. As soon as I rolled it out and was measuring it, my head went straight to cape. Now I'm not really sure what kind of cape because honestly there's like a bunch of different capes that I'd like to make. There's a whole cape exploration somewhere in my future. <laughs> so for now I will just do, you know, one of the many kinds of capes that I would like to make. And uh, she's gonna be naked under that cape. Sexy. Then we have this really fun strawberry print material. You know that strawberry dress that everyone is in love with? I don't actually like it all that much, like it's adorable, but it's not really my style. But this fabric, I wanna make my style of strawberry dress from. So I do wanna make like a similar-ish, flowy, pretty, cottage y kind of dress out of this. This fabric would definitely need a lining up top, so I'm thinking sort of a, a corset style lace-up front top with with a big, big flowing skirt, maybe a ruffle around the bottom. And that skirt could even split down the center and then the lining skirt underneath it would be nice and short. And then there would be giant sleeves, giant puffy sleeves off the shoulders, maybe with a ruffle around those as well, you know, something along those lines. All right, so now it's back to the giant pile. Did I mention? that it's a little bit overwhelming. I'm just gonna start pulling out pieces that I already have plans for. Plans. Got a plan for that one. Is that all of it? <laughs> Do you ever have those moments when your brain decides to like paint a spider onto what you're looking at and it's most definitely not there, but you just like momentarily have a little heart attack. So much fun. Ow, let's not have that anymore. <clears throat> As I promptly throw the pin into the midst of this fabric. Are you kidding me? How did you disappear so fast? Oh no, I'm gonna find that when I least expect it in probably a painful way. I think I also wanna separate out plain white cream and black fabrics because I either am going to be embroidering on those or using them as a lining. I found the pin and I didn't hurt myself. We are making headway. Is this a house for hermit crab. So we've got a pile of like industrial fabric. That's not at all the correct term, but that's how I'm thinking of it. We've got a pile of small fabrics. We've got my already have plans for it fabric. And then hidden over here, I have all of my Goodwill fabric that doesn't exactly smell the cleanest. I mean, it is all clean. I washed it thoroughly when I brought it home. It's just at that place where like the closet storage smell doesn't go away anymore. Let's pause and design some stuff. First up, I have this blue gingham. There's like eight yards of it. And as I mentioned in my pleats video, I wanna use this to make a quadruple box pleated skirt. Requires a massive amount of material. I got this for extremely cheap. So why not, you know, go for it. It should be uh, quite massive. Probably gonna end up being about T length. And it's gonna have some quadruple box pleats, like so. Simple enough. I also have these blue striped chunks of material. I got this in the Remainders street sale as well, or sidewalk sale. It was another thing that I just kind of tossed in the bag and then I got home and was like, oh, these are all cut up little pieces of fabric. But there's a buttload of them here and I thought it would be really cool, especially because they're striped so I can turn the patterns in different directions to try to make a skirt or possibly even a dress, but I'm not sure there's enough material for that by piecing together the different shapes, basically kind of a like crazy quilting. I don't really know how that would work. It's something I would figure out in the moment, but that is my plans for these random chunks of fabric. Sort of like that. This cream material has like a light stretch to it, a really cool texture on the outside and it's nice and soft on the inside. I actually got this out of a big old bin in Goodwill, but it's not a sheet or a tablecloth or anything. It is just a chunk of fabric. And for some reason, since the day that I got it, I have just pictured some wide legged pants out of these. And I've kind of just been waiting until I was able to make pants, which I'm kind of able to now. 
This fabric I pulled out when I was making my Grammy's dress and almost switched and started using this fabric and made a significantly simpler dress. It's kind of crazy. It's bright, it's glittery, which is why it's in this bag and I'm not taking it out. But I was like, hey, what better occasion for something bright and glittery and a little bit over the top than, you know, an award ceremony. Ultimately, I went with my other dress, but I still kind of want to make the dress that I was picturing out of it. So I'm leaving it on the I have plans for it place. I actually just used a pattern that I think would be perfect for this. Yes, shocking, a pattern. But it's a very simple dress style, which I think is perfect because this is just so loud of a fabric. So yeah, that's the plan there. I have this really interesting like sky blue material that reminds me of like an Aida basically. So I got this from Remainders and I immediately just thought of cross stitching because it looks like cross stitch fabric. And I thought, hey, what if I make a skirt and then I cross stitch on the skirt? That's the whole plan there. Don't know what I'm cross stitching on it. So just gonna put some random X's for now. Next, this white silky, satiny, whatever this material is. I don't really know. I'm hoping that it's similar to silk because I got it in hopes of making sort of that 1930s style silk gown. I'm not really sure specifically what style yet, so I'm just gonna kind of draw something random. But yeah, that's the hope here. I don't know if there's enough fabric for it, but it's on the list. It's on the plans. This very large chunk of floral fabric is a duvet cover that I got from Goodwill. So it's not something that I really want to make a, a real piece of clothing out of, but I have sort of um, just a, a simple costumey kind of idea, very like Greek goddess sort of style that I want to try making. And I think that this fabric will be perfect for it because it's lightly see-through, it's, you know, simple and floral and pretty. And this would really just be a garment for the fun of it. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So these last three materials, I think. One, two, three. Yeah, they are not things that I necessarily designed for. They're pieces of fabric that I want to use to make like copycat dresses. Costumes that I like and I would love to make my own version of. So the first is this absolutely gorgeous pale blue material. It has this very um, monotone floral design there that just like picks up the light from different directions. I got this randomly and then realized afterwards that I think it would be a beautiful material to use for Audrey Hepburn's, I think it's her final dress in Roman Holiday. Absolutely stunningly gorgeous dress. It is not exactly an easy looking dress to make, but I want it. The movie's in black and white. This dress is probably, I'm thinking like a cream color originally, but you can tell that it has that sort of large floral design on the fabric. And I think it would look absolutely gorgeous in this pale blue. Then I have these two chunks of fabric, which I have actually had in my possession for like over a decade. They were given to me with a very specific dress in mind and someday I will make that dress with them. And that is all I shall say on that. Then we have these two pieces of yellow material which I specifically purchased with this dress from Brigadoon in mind. I have loved this dress since I was probably like 12 years old and I really want to make it someday. I shouldn't need both of these materials for that dress. I'm assuming that the paler yellow one is better both in color and because there's more of it, but I'm gonna hold on to the second piece just in case. Better safe than sorry, you know? And that apparently is all the material that I currently have plans for. I definitely thought I had way more. Moving on. Okay, so I've done a little bit here. Not much, but a little bit. All of the fabric that I have plans for is now here on this top shelf, along with all of my industrial fabric, lining fabric. I also took all of what I'll call the mock-up fabric, the sheets, the duvet covers, the stuff from Goodwill, and I stashed it into this upper cabinet so it's just sort of out of the way, but if I need mock-up fabric, I know where to look. Then I took all of those non-stretch small pieces that are really just for embroidery to the cabinet in the living room. So the plan now is to basically get a non-stretch stretch and specialty shelf for all of the remaining fabric. I don't know if that's gonna work because let's look at what's left, huh? Whoop, it's still a lot.
It doesn't look nearly as daunting in neat stacks. It is interesting to see that like, I kind of have even amounts of my three categories. This is our non-stretch. Stretch is like here-ish and then specialty over here. The, the one downside of this cabinet is that it is really deep. So what was happening a lot in the mess that existed here a few hours ago is that fabric was getting shoved to the back and then covered up and it was just disappearing. So I do wanna to try to make sure that all of my fabric can be seen right from looking in. It's so pretty! I can see every single piece of fabric and there's still space in here. I could fit more fabric. I'm not gonna, but I could. So we now move on to non-stretch. I love this piece of fabric. No idea what I'm gonna make with that. That's one of those that I get like really nervous about using, which this is totally a thing that comes from my childhood, from way back. My mom constantly bought us crafting supplies, especially those kits that you could get. I mean, you can still get them. Cause she wanted us to be crafty and creative. And I love that because we all became rather crafty and creative, but I was so bad at using a lot of it, even though I was so excited to get it. And she'd be like, why aren't you using the presents that I got you? Why aren't you using these craft supplies? You're supposed to make stuff with it. And I was always like, yeah, but like if I make the stuff, then I won't have it anymore and I won't be able to make it anymore because I already made it and I'll have used it up. Because I think the same thing is true back then that is true today. I enjoy the process of making things far more than having an end product. But now I'm starting to get all of these like really cute, very specific fabrics. And now I'm like, well, what if I use that? And then a month later I come up with a project idea and I'm like, <gasps> That fabric would have been perfect for it, but I already used it. Oh no! Long story short, I've been an overthinker from a very young age. But I'm not letting that happen with fabric. I need to use this stuff. I cannot allow myself to fall into the habit of hoarding stuff and never doing anything with it, which is what I did as a kid. Not allowed. Once again, it looks beautiful. You can see all the fabrics, all the colors. All right, specialty. Kind of want to break this down a little further. Okay, so we have sparkle, shiny, sheer, lace, and then thick. Let's start with the thick boys. All right, last stuff to go in is gonna be the lace. Well, y'all, she's done. And it looks fabulous. How long will it stay this way? That's the question. Thanks for joining me for some organizing, cleaning, planning fun. I'll see you next time.